Welcome back guys to Starlighter Star Series Season 11. This is your China group stage and this is our second to last day of group stage play. After tomorrow we're all done, we'll have our top four and we'll be heading in to the bracket play to determine who is going to come out on top. I'm Basecap here on behalf of Beyond the Summit. Great to be joining you for our third remaining. of four best of ones for the evening. It's Lie Gaming versus Immortal remaining. Magneto to get you guys up to speed. Current standings for these two teams. Lie Gaming have played five of their seven matches and have a two and three overall record. Immortal Magneto, unfortunately, have also played five, but they're down at one and four. So I think there is still a chance that Lie Gaming could advance <coughs> into the next phase of competition with a 4-3 and three record overall, but uh, a loss here probably means that they're out of contention, and I think Immortal Magneto, it may already be too late uh, to climb their way back Sky in. So we'll see how they do this game. Should still be some pretty good Dota Sky all the same, and best of one, as Dota always, anything can happen. We've had some great games so far this evening, and hopefully the trend will only continue. Jumping ourselves into this draft, we've got Radiant a Wisp and a Death Prophet banned out by Immortal Magneto. Meanwhile, over on Lie Gaming, Brewmaster and Faceless Void are both going to have some time on the bench this game. We've got Batrider and Ancient Apparition as the early pickups here for Lie. Harkening back to, at least for me, remaining. to an older patch. If I'm being honest. Batrider and Ancient Five Apparition, a couple of versions ago, very highly prioritized. Both fantastic heroes. Trilane versus Trilane was still a thing. Batrider was still a very good 1v1 hero. And we saw these guys all the time. Now, I'm a little bit surprised to see both of them in the first two, but it looks like Light Gaming still have something Dire in mind back. here. Immortal Magneto, just pretty stock standard. Ogre, Skywrath, they get two of the best roaming supports in the game here. Just gonna look to secure their 1v1 matchups Radiant with lane dominators like Razor and Viper who end up being banned out and they're just gonna try and run around and, and set up some kills. So I like the way that they're thinking right now. Uh, definitely nice to always come out swinging and try and secure that early game advantage just because as we've seen, Immortal Magneto have struggled a little bit, especially this tournament, I would say, in that game that they played against Five IG yesterday remaining. with greedy lineups. They had a triple melee core with a Void, a Troll, and a... I don't even remember what was on their safe lane, but they got pushed down in like 20 minutes by by IG. So, And that was, that was actually IG climbing to their first win of the group stage. They're still currently sitting down at 1 and 3. Things not looking great for them at the moment. But with those lane dominators off by the wayside, Immortal Magneto going to have to find some other things to sure things up. And we will once again be seeing the Ember Spirit this evening. I think we saw him in... Radiant uh, did we see him in our first game? Yes. Did we see him in the second game? Yes. And are we going to see him in the third game? You betcha. Uh, not always that amazing against the Batrider, but does give them somebody that's reasonable in a 1v1 and ties in nicely to this theme that they've got going on of ganking with the Ogre and the Skyrath Mage. Meanwhile, Lie Gaiman still feels like they're drafting on a completely different version. They're going to be picking themselves remaining. up a Lifestealer here. Five which is remaining. somewhat unusual. They do get the Lifestealer bomb going with the Batrider, which is always nice to have. Find some pickoffs around the place. It is looking like it's going to be a farming life stealer as opposed to an as opposed to an offlaner. Let's say uh, we did see some Chinese teams in the past running tide, uh, running not tide, Dire running life stealer as an offlane, uh, and having an initiator on the safe lane to farm up a blink dagger pretty quickly. But I don't know if that's going to be the case here. And Immortal Magneto are going to start augmenting all of that pickoff with a little bit of team fight, a little bit of five man as they grab themselves a Tidehunter here. Nice to have against the Batrider, definitely not a hero that you want to be dragging into the middle of your team if you're Bat, so good in that sense, but also very good to counter-initiate a lasso if somebody on your team gets jumped. Batrider, you know, Tidehunter just jumps in, ravages everybody, wastes the lasso duration, and uh, you can potentially counter-initiate from there. And you no know, more old school picks coming out of Lie do end up grabbing the Rubik. I think kind of worth it this game. There's plenty of solid spells to steal. And Ten of course that ever remaining. elusive Ravage. If he can ever get his hands on that is always Five going to be seconds. great. As much as I love Rubik, there's a bunch of heroes in this version that I love but are just really not all Reserve that viable. Time. Rubik, Chen, 
uh, Enchantress to a degree, all just really don't have much of a home. So we'll see how the Rubik ends up doing this game. But I feel that he just really doesn't stack up to supports like Venge, Sky, Ogre, Jakiro, AA, Dazzle, you know, all of your all of your commonly picked support at supports at the moment. Remaining. Unless there's multiple game changing abilities to Dire steal. So for the moment that's pretty much just the Ravage and we'll see if uh, if poor Ruby can get his hands on that this game. Meanwhile, uh, the Invoker is going to be banned out. You can kind of see what Immortal Magneto were thinking about. There's some Batrider potential pickoffs. There could be lift into Sun Strikes. There's lift into Cold Feet. The one thing that Rubik does have really going for himself this game is that he's a very good hero, very good support to partner along with the Ancient Apparition. You've got two full range supports with a reasonable base attack time, really getting a lot of benefit out of the Chilling Touch. And as said, the lift is a great way to set up uh, into a cold t into a into a cold feet. Chilling touch. I was trying to say chilling feet and realized that was wrong. But yeah, set up for a combo and uh, hopefully find some pickoffs that way. A little bit difficult against the ogre, but uh, there are maybe some pickoffs on the Skywrath Mage on the horizon. And Immortal Magneto to round things up, looking for a final core. Only a couple of seconds of reserve time remaining, so we'll have all your questions answered remaining. shortly. Lie Gaming, meanwhile, do end up banning Dire out the Naga Siren and. Well, if Lie Gaming are going to draft old school heroes like Lifestealer, well, Immortal Magneto are going to have to draft some old school counters of their own. They grab the Weaver, Lincoln Sphere, always going to be great against the Batrider, Kiting around in circles, always fantastic against the Nakes. So, uh, a pick that we haven't really been seeing a whole lot of recently, but I think one that could work out nicely this game for Immortal Magneto. They are going to have a bit of a weird spot in the mid game where the weaver probably Five isn't quite online remaining. but the ember is starting to fall off and that could be where Lai could really strike Reserve with time. their timing but at the moment Lai's tower damage is a little bit lacking they're pretty much all in on just team fight and pick off so I think there's still going to be enough time for the weaver to get the ball rolling and we tend not you know people don't go too greedy on the weaver builds these days they get some value survivability maybe we'll see an urn and Aquila, some treads uh, then start working in towards the Lincolns, but still being ready to contribute to the little skirmishes if they do happen to break out. So, yeah, we've heard a little bit less of a liability in that sense, but Lai just need to find... So what are they going to go for here? They've got Initiation on the bat, they don't really have a heck of a lot of team fight, and they don't really have a heck of a lot of tower damage at the moment either. Um, lockdown for the Ember Tide Weaver also perhaps a little bit lacking, so there's maybe a nagging thought of going for something like a Core Silence for this game, but nope, just gonna stay all in on this early to mid game pick off and brawling as they do end up going for it a bad. Nice hero to have in this kind of situation because if they do manage to win a fight, he can keep everybody healed up and keep them uh, kicking and manage to bring down some towers, but uh, we'll see what he ends up doing this game. Lai could even end up going aggressive. They've got Ancient Apparition, Rubik, and Abaddon, so somebody's gonna have to actually take up a farming role, or take up the mantle of a farmer in this game. And we'll see who exactly that's gonna end up being. They don't really have anyone that's capable of soloing the Tidehunter, so going aggressive is definitely difficult in that sense. Lifestealer can't do it, Batrider being gutted the way that he is now, uh, in terms of 1v1 matchups, definitely can't do it either. So... I actually don't know what, what Lai have planned here. Maybe some dual lanes, uh, something a little bit funky coming out of them. But welcome in, guys, to our third best of one for the evening for, for Star Series 11 China group stages. Second to last day over on Lai Gaming. We have XTT on Lifestealer, XZ on Abaddon, Super, the other Super, on Ancient Apparition. We've got 5400 on the Rubik. Some of you may remember him from 4Love. And finally, we have XDD over on Batrider. Meanwhile, on Immortal Magneto, I believe we have 11 on the Tidehunter. Mars C is going to be on the Ember Spirit, or Mar SC. Uh, we've got Y Sim on the Weaver. We've got James on the Ogre Magi. And we have somebody whose name I always have to look up on the Skyrath Mage. But I'll get that sorted right after we get past these potential level 1 engagements. It's 400. Trying to lead the way with that 290 base move speed, but Weaver's just going to skitter on by. They do end up placing down a ward to try and block out this camp, but that may have been spotted by the Weaver. And I don't think that Lai got full scouts. Yeah, they didn't get full scouting information out on 
uh, Immortal Magneto s supports, though they do end up placing down another sentry just to keep this one blocked out, and looks like Immortal Magneto actually a little bit off the mark. I'm not going to find the Observer, they may find the sentry, but the battle begins. they've actually already... where is their second sentry ward? They've actually passed Tide Hunter, interestingly enough. So, Tide's not really going to do too much with that, and that means that this pole camp is blocked as the lie aggressive trilane makes it way down. Looks like it's going to be a farming Abaddon for this one, since he has picked up a Ring of Protection. Uh, and as we settle into our lanes, I'll very quickly try and figure out who this who this guy is. I like I like calling people by their actual names. There's a yeah, I, th I think it's important. Anyway, let's quickly do this. For some reason I have sound while alt tab off, so things mysteriously get muted for you guys as I try and keep an eye on what's going on down here. So it's Yi Hao Wei on the uh, on this Skyrath Mage. Lift up on the Weaver, definitely not a target that they can be going for at this stage. 5400 copping some arcane bolts to the face. Still a while to wait on the next telekinesis. Uh, this top lane, again, I don't think it's all that amazing for the Batrider. Doesn't really have kill pressure on the Tide, especially with this magic stick, and Tide's gonna get plenty of farm uh, just by spamming Anchor Smash. So and Fairly even overall, I don't think the Tide really has kill potential, but I don't know if you want a reasonably farmed Tide Hunter this game, if you lie. Especially if they don't accomplish too much down here on the bottom lane. And as much as things are going nicely at the start because they've blocked out the pull, they haven't really been able to find any openings. And the only person who's really all that vulnerable is the Skyrath Mage. Meanwhile, stopping in over mid lane very quickly, XTT 7 and 0. We've got the Ember Spirit over at 8 and 1, so things shaping up pretty even there. And we'll see how much longer Lai can keep this going. They actually came down to this lane with not all that much regen. Double pack of tangos on the Abaddon. Looks like not a whole lot on the Ancient Apparition in 5400. If he had tangos, he's already chewed through them and he's just got a salve remaining. So, things starting to look a little bit tenuous and actually an early point in the passive picked up for the Abaddon here. Bat getting pressured under his tower out of mana, forced to pop the Firefly and this is where the Tide Hunter can really just start taking over. So I think the laning decisions for Lai, you know, again, I, I feel like their draft is a little bit old school and off, kind of going off a previous patch. And back then, I think the Batrider has a much better chance against uh, the Tide, but definitely, definitely not these days. Well, we're going to jump in on top of Super. Big burst damage coming out. They get the Cold Feet and the Chilling Touch off, but Ogre's just going to walk that one right into the side shot. 5400's got the bug up, we've got the auto attacks coming in. Looks like he should just barely survive this one. He's gonna pop off the salve and try and make a return, but Immortal Magneto strike first. They pick up that first blood and it's on none other than the Skyrath Mage. Abaddon comes in really aggressively. He does have some stick charges to keep himself fueled. They get the lift off on the Weaver. Partway through the Shikuchi, he does actually get brought down back into range of that sentry ward. Now James is in some trouble. XZ gonna shield up and now Lai come in looking for these kills. He makes his way over into the trees. The camera goes wild. Super picks up the double kill. 5400 looks like he is gonna end up paying the price. Wysim brings him down. But Shikuchi's still on cooldown for another three seconds. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get this ancient apparition. XZ has a shield. Wysim comes in. There's the shield. Stick charges popped. Weaver. Still the Shikuchi for a little bit, does manage to dodge the cold feet. Ogre back and brawling in this fight. Another lift comes out that's going to waste some of the Shikuchi, but the Weaver still gets far enough away. James now slowed up by the Curse of Avernus, along with the slow from the Ice Vortex. XZ wants to go in here, but needs to be a little bit careful, throws out the nuke. But the Ogre is just too beefy, and Lai can have to settle for the double kill that they picked up earlier. Two for three, the overall exchange right now. Double damage haste, Ember Spirit. Sees XDD come down for the rune, but he doesn't do anything about it. I think that I think that could have potentially been a very easy kill. It does have one point up inside of Fist instead of a second point in Searing Chains, but it's not like the Batrider has a TP scroll. And DD Haste is just bonkers. Meanwhile, Ancient Apparition gonna end up suiciding to Roshan. Tide crushing the top lane, no problem. Doubling up the Batrider's CS. 28 and 7 for him right now. XDD just retreating to the jungle to try and set up some stacks, but unfortunately he's going to get plagued by Mud Golems. Uh, looks like Ember is still going to go in here, or considering it with the Haste Rune. It is pretty low armor, so 
tower dives are a little bit difficult for him because of that. Bottom lane, Weaver is scraping Dyer's together what farm he can. Uh, Xe's still at the front of this tri lane, they've got the Ancient Apparition coming back soon. Uh, but no more anti-invis picked up, so... Kill opportunities on the Weaver are now going to be few and far between, and... Like we talked about earlier, the Ogre is pretty tough, so... As long as Yi Haowei is in a good spot, then I don't think... I don't think Lai are going to be profiting too much more from... From bottom lane, so... Let's call bottom lane kind of a tie overall. Uh, middle lane is definitely a win for the Lifestealer, but the Ember getting uncontested farm when there's going to be low HP and low level heroes, like these two supports, on the map is always going to be scary, and top lane's a clean win for the Tidehunter. So I, I do think Immortal Magneto are actually grinding out a little bit of an advantage right now. Yeah, 700 and almost 1k net worth, and about 300 experience their lead. 6 minute rune, still a little ways off, Ember unfortunately not lining up his shields at the right time to push out this next wave and go and grab this one. Honestly this is probably a bit of wasted time, he's got 3 remnants, could have used one to grab the rune or yeah, could have lined up his shield a little bit better to push out the lane, but I don't think it should matter for too much. 5400 and Super are actually going to ditch bottom lane and make their way topside, we've got the level 6 up on the Batrider so he can drag this tide back to a potential kill. It is going to be pretty difficult though. He's got the Ravage. They've got the first damage coming in. There's the Cold Feet. He drops it. Does manage to run back. Stick Charge is keeping him alive for now. The Lift comes back out. It looks like they will manage to get this. Ultimate traded for Ultimate. Kraken Shell still going to work, but does finally end up going down. Meanwhile, on the middle lane, X2T raging up as we have a dive from the Ember Spirit. Abaddon also dying in the meantime on bottom lane. While the supports are away, very easy kills for the Skyrath Mage, the Ogre, and the Weaver. And, well, we talked about Skyrath Mage and Ogre being free to roam around and set up kills this game, and with the departure of the Light Gaming supports, they're finally going to be able to start doing that and start getting some getting some potential kills. If they're checking XTT, they'll know that he's out of mana, and this should be a pretty easy kill. Out comes the Searing Chains. Does just have enough with the Stick Charges to actually get the Rage off. That means no kill this time around. I think just the exact same as I was. They weren't factoring in uh, factoring in the two stick charges that he was going to get off the combo. And well, there you go. XTT lives to fight another day. Support's going to have to wander away empty-handed. 5400 has had a little bit of space opened up for him on the top lane. Rubik, again, another big reason why Rubik's not so great at the moment is he pretty much has to buy Arcanes. Even if nobody else on his team needs Arcane Boots, Rubik has to buy them. There's, all of his spells are pretty expensive, and most of the spells that, that are high value that you're going to be stealing from the enemy team, you need that little bit of extra sustain. So, uh, unfortunately, Tranquil Boot's not really an option for him. Unless you're getting really good farm, in which case you can go Tranquil's Yules or something like that. But just tends not to happen with Rubik. Sad, sad state of affairs for the poor guy. Uh, meanwhile, Eleven, just wandering his way through the Radiant Jungle, trying to scout out any potential stacks, trying to get some steals going, if he can. XDD and XZ, still hanging around here, but not going to be able to get anything done. XTT, interestingly enough, also coming over to get involved with this stack action, so... Some free farm being missed out over on the middle lane. Some Observer Wards being dropped off around the place, as XZ has completely ditched the offlane, and the Weaver is now starting to pick up the pace on farm. And Tide runs straight up into Batrider, but shows no fear. Anchor smashing away. The Ancient Apparition is just around the corner, so... Should maybe respect this tri-lane a little bit more. Tide getting stacked up with the Sticky. There's the drag, looking to get him up onto this high ground where he is pinned in. Could drop a Ravage, but no reason to. And XCD does manage to grab himself a nice kill. Actually, that's going to be his Blink Dagger secured, so... 80 seconds until he can use another Lasso, but... Definitely a big death to be giving away for the Tide, who... Gets a bit ahead of himself there. He's really given the opportunity for this Batrider to catch back up in the game. In particular with that. And also 5400 gets close to those oh-so-important arcane boots that I was ranting about earlier. So he's going to be pretty happy with his lot in life. James looking for an ignite. Closing the gap slowly but surely. Can he get this one out? There's the concussive shot. 5400 still on the retreat. Super. Going to throw it in a vortex and that's all that he can do. The lift does cover some ground. 
And 5400 is able to retreat. So another unsuccessful rotation out of James and Yi Hao Wei as they make their way top lane. Meanwhile, XZ just scraping together what creeps he can down on bot. Actually not doing too well in terms of the overall CS, but fortunately he is a badden, so can kind of cope without having uh, without having too many items. Meanwhile, the Weaver, no big surprise to see the beginnings of a Lincoln Sphere forming up in his inventory. Just going to do his best to pressure the Abaddon out of the lane. And XTD, ready to show off this shiny new Blink. Looks like 5400 is going to be joining him this time around. Does have his level 6 up. Would be very glad to steal a Shikuchi if it's at all possible. There is a Radiant Ward scouting out all of this. So I think there's no chance that Ysim ends up dying. And knowing that the Rubik just TP'd bot, that opens up top lane for the Weaver to TP up here and grab. Also, it looks like super. Going to be a free kill. No TP. No retreat to the trees. Tidehunter even going to secure that one with one last anchor smash. Getting that little bit closer to his Black Dagger. So, wards should come as no surprise that they absolutely change games. And Immortal Magneto with a little bit of extra information not only dodge a gank, but secure themselves Dyer's a tower ember. Waiting down here, Dyer's just keeping some remnants out, ready attack. to escape. Knowing that the bat may have rotated over towards mid lane. This tier 1 tower just about to fall. And a few more auto attacks. That one Dyer's also taken by the tide. So if you want to mech or blink, it's definitely his right this second. XZ gonna be pushing in bottom lane. Looks like just some phase boots on the agenda for him. And it does end up being a blink dagger for the tide. If you have, if you want any chance of getting a ravage off on this life stealer, then attack. I think you definitely need the blink dagger. And we'll see if Immortal Magneto, this third rotation of theirs with the supports, is going to be any more successful. Radiant's bottom tower uh, is under attack. Trying to bait out the rage from the life stealer with the searing chains. Not going to work. The ravage comes in. It's not fast enough. XCT finger hovering over that rage button. Ravage completely wasted. XD jumps in, however. Almost gets immediately blown up, doesn't manage to use the lasso, beautiful Ice Blast flies in, connects on two, Ember is still trying to decide where exactly he's going, 5400 underneath the tower, will James tick out, not quite, last tick of the Ancient Apparition ult, not quite enough to bring him down. And eh, after all of that, Lai actually end up getting two kills for themselves, uh, that Ice Blast doing big damage and... and it, Abaddon coming through at just the right time with a couple of shields. There's a huge waste for Immortal Magneto, honestly, though. Going for that. Okay. Dropping the Ravage and then having it completely with 5400 and XTD. That lasso is still available. Weaver needs to be a little bit careful up on this high ground. Has managed to Shikuchi himself down. Ice Blast. Off the mark is going to harass the Skyrath Mage a little bit and reveal where he's up. Or wh what he's up to. But I think I think he's gonna be fine. But it looks like with Ravage on cooldown, it's gonna be back to farming stations for Modal Magneto. Tide already over to the Ancients. Weaver back down bottom, and in general, the team making pretty good use of their time. I think these supports are haven't really done all that much this game. They've they've gone mid, they've gone top, they've gone mid again. None of those movements have have been a successful gank and honestly at the moment they just look a little bit look a little bit lost. They're also being scouted out by this dire ward from time to time. So it's actually live baiting on this middle lane. And they're gonna get a D ward down at the same time. Meanwhile, 5400, he's got those precious, precious arcanes. Also some pretty good levels. Almost nine on this Rubik, so his team is definitely making some space for him. Uh, but Super is not falling behind either. Also almost up to level eight. So doing pretty well and could see the beginnings of a uh, Aghanim Scepter for him before too long. And what else? We we do really want to see a uh, you know another lasso gank out of Batrider, but XCD has been a little bit unlucky with the last couple, so we'll see what he ends up doing. Does get a smoke delivered, so it looks like he's still got ganks on the brain. Immortal Magneto, three man smoke up. Ravage in just a couple of seconds. They desperately want this kill on the mid lane. Um, but the Abaddon might prove to be a little bit difficult to grab. Another shield comes out. Still has his ultimate. That's going to be popped off. Multicast actually charging him up a bit there. Along with the Arcane Bolt. Mystic Flare now comes out. They jump in. Looking for this kill. XTT drops the immediate rage as he TPs into the thick of things. Ice Blast is going to connect on all four. And Skyrath Mage actually tanking up the tower may go down here. 
And it's gonna be close. Last tick, not quite. What's the percentage on level one actually? Okay, it's exactly, exactly 10%. Skyrath survives. 5400 getting himself into a bit of a sneaky spot with his stolen Shikuchi. Also getting a nice ward down to keep an eye on any rotations over towards this middle lane. Similar kind of story down here on bot. Yeah, Weaver, as anticipated, still just working on... Yeah, still just working on his Lincoln Sphere at the moment. Nice lift out of 5400, Ice Blast coming in as well and Weaver gets blown the heck up. No chance for him to get out of there. The only clue that he had was when Rubik Shikuchi'd through him, but... If, if you panic time-lapse there, then... If you panic time-lapse there, you survive, but... Uh, it feels a little bit wasteful if you're... If you're Weaver, but... You live and learn. We've actually got really aggressive wards placed down by Immortal Magneto. There's a jump in onto XZ, looking for this kill. There is a shield and a heal. XZ comes in. Won't be able to keep him alive through the Mystic Flare, however. Back underneath the tower, he's gonna pop off the ultimate borrowed time, buying him a couple of seconds, but there's still another Searing Chains and a multicast. James looks like he's gonna be the only one to tank the Ice Blast. Ysim now coming in, throws out some auto attacks, but the Rage Life Stealer still going to work, looks for the kill, does manage to find it. Ravage comes out, only catches 5400, and we've got an Infest away to safety. Now the Life Stealer. Pops back out, picks up the double kill, 5400, still shikuchiing around the place. And that's gonna be it. Two for three, ends up being the overall exchange. Huge experience swing in Lie Gaming's favor, and... Well, once again, just an unimpressive Ravage out of the tide. If he'd waited another fraction of a second and the ra and the Rage had been off for the Lifestealer, then I think that's a much better... a much better ult, but... Doesn't work out. Got triple disconnect, but the auto pauses are in place, so hopefully everyone will get themselves back in pretty quickly. And what else do we have to talk about? Net worth lead is still about 1k in Immortal Magneto's favor, but unsuccessful team fights are starting to drag them down, and well, just better efficiency overall from Lai is gonna start pulling them ahead on the experience. The big difference, of course, is really the the supports and just the overall efficiency of why we've seen immortal magneto supports sitting behind heroes on mid lane moving around but not really setting up all that many ganks meanwhile lie they've been chilling they've been finding successful ganks but they've also found time to sit down in lanes and actually grab some solid levels for themselves so just overall map utilization right now definitely falling in favor of uh the dire side why sim has managed to pin up, pick up his perseverance but still a couple of components to go until he adds his lincoln sphere James sauntering towards mid on this ogre. XDD does need to be a little bit careful as Firefly actually fades as he tries to get over the cliff and... Oh, Weaver picks up an easy peasy solo kill. Very nicely done there by him. And honestly just pure panic from the uh, from the Batrider as well. Meanwhile, Super uh, Hand of Midas is going to be the choice for him. The levels on Ice Blast are nice, but the more important thing about the Aghanim Scepter is really the duration, and for that it doesn't really matter so much if you're if you're only level 11 versus level 16. So personally, I'm not a huge fan um, of the Midas pickup on the AA, but it's still something that we see quite a bit around the place. 5400, going to drop in the center where it only catches a glimpse of Wyson as he makes his way through these trees. Won't be able to steal the swarm, well, won't be able to steal Shikuchi here, so he needs to be careful, but they've got the Batrider blink in, along with the lasso. Now the Shikuchi gets stolen, and XCD claims his revenge as he swoops in to grab that kill. Keeping things even. 10 and 12 on the overall scoreline. We've got a little bit of lag for lag gaming, so just going to have to chill out. In terms of vision, what have we got going on? I don't know why this ward is here, really. For a lie. I guess they think that the Weaver might now be splitting top lane and then trying to farm the big camp uh, and the small camp, and they're trying to see if he's actually... You know, they're trying to see if the Ember or the Weaver is coming up here to do that and doing their best to punish. So in that sense, I think the ward is fine, but... Also, you know, there's obviously no tier 1 tower up here anymore. So there isn't really too much of a reason to, to be spotting TPs to this... To this tier one. I doubt Immortal Magneto are going to be launching very many ganks from up here. This ward is very valuable uh, if Lai are going to try and get any kind of pushing done on mid, maybe after finding a pickoff. Meanwhile, Radiant Warding 
I don't know how they just placed this one. Looks like Ogre wandered his way over into the pit, but definitely very nice if the tier 1 tower on bottom lane is going to be an objective coming up soon. And especially if they just tell the Weaver to just chill out. You don't need to split push top. Just go hang down bottom lane, finish your Lincoln Sphere, start working towards your damage item. Because that is the one big problem with Weaver. He's not, he's not a one item carry uh, in any sense. Even a hero like Phantom Assassin, you get your BKB, even if you don't have a damage item. You're kind of happy and you can you can go and participate in some fights, but uh, Weaver, even with a Lincoln Sphere, just kind of kind of tickles. So definitely needs to get up to his next item after that. Looks like we're going to have an attempt here. Uh, Lion, not, they've got some weird things going on, like Lifestealer has an armlet, so he definitely wants to just go and fight and push and continue to find pickoffs. Bat Rider's going straight for his Force Staff. All of this is not unusual at all, but I find the... The Ancient Apparition Midas doesn't really gel with the, you know, w with what the rest of the team is doing. XZ maybe gonna pick up a mech before too long if he can get his hands on it. Okay, 5400 just gonna keep moving around with the Shikuchi and try and find some more pickoffs. But again, their team doesn't really push all that well, so there's still tier ones to muscle through. Do spam ping out the Rubik as he makes his way down here towards Bot James. The only one underneath this tower. Another ward popped down to try and keep an eye on what's going on, but lie unsuccessful on finding these ganks. And the fresh wards placed by Ogre just earlier uh, are already paying dividends. Is under attack. They need an ice blast, I think, if they're going to get any of these kills reliably. The Ember and the Skyrath Mage do push down into the river. They've got a sentry ward waiting. They get the silence off, but out pops an angry XCT. They blow up the Rubik. It's a one-for-one one exchange as the Ice Blast sails through. And that's it. Tidehunter still just casually farming away at some stacked Ancients. And just a one-for-one one support trade. We've got that Midas complete for the Ancient Apparition. Super, in fact, already level 11. Base of the game, somewhat slow, actually. It's 20 minutes in, but it doesn't really feel like it. Especially with the overall tower position. Ember Spirit. Just the Perseverance away from completing his Battle Fury. Weaver getting last hit on top lane. I don't think they have the burst. Flame Break is going to end up making it enough. Ice Blast was one second off cooldown as they found that kill. But another really nice pickoff from XDD. And I think it's weird that Immortal Magneto have the Ogre farming bot and they have the Weaver farming top lane. And as much as I thought that this ward wasn't really going to pay off for Lai, this is exactly the situation where it does. Weaver split pushing top, split farming these two camps and ends up being punished for it. Tidehunter, meanwhile, another 2200 gold up in the bank. Looking very nice for him so far this game. And uh, he's got a value cloak so far. Not sure if he'll, if he'll end up just going straight for the pipe. Definitely very nice to have against the Firefly damage and uh, all of the other magical bursts coming out of, uh, coming out of the Dire Squad. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Meanwhile, Immortal Magneto are going to look for their second tier 1 tower of the game as they come in Radiant for this tier 1 on mid. XZ going to try and make it at the very Radiant least a trade as he pushes down towards bottom lane. XTT lurking in the trees. Where's the Batrider? He's got the lasso cooling down right this second. Radiant's Needs to find the jump in. Ice Blast connects on two. Slide of Fist. Dodges out of the way. Doesn't get hit by the Radiant's initial blast, but still cops the debuff there. And XZ actually manages to get the last one on the tier 1 tower at bottom lane, so successful defense from Lai, and we've got a smoke gank coming up with the Lifestealer Bomb. Four step at the ready for the Batrider. Looks like YSM might once again be delayed uh, on finding this Lincoln Sphere. CD trying to get as much value out of this Firefly as he can. Jump on top of James, dragging him back into the Mystic Flare. Batrider's still going to get through that just fine. Bloodlust stolen, Tidehunter. Jumping into the thick of things, trying to find some initiation. But Light Gaming have all scattered. 5400 does get spotted over in the trees, and looks like it will end up being, at the very least, a trade. And with Lasso on cooldown, I think Immortal Magneto can just go straight in and... Yeah, can just go straight in and start getting some... Getting some pushing done. It's only 45 seconds, and I guess bottom lane is far enough in that they... They probably can't. So heads up play for Exe to just head straight down there and... And get the lane pushed in. Weaver is still one component away from, well, at least a recipe Radiant's away from completing his Lincoln Sphere and Tide. Not gonna opt for the pipe or anything like that. Actually, it looks like it's just a straight refresher rush. 
in this game. I mean, it's definitely, it's not too bad, but... I feel like Ravages have already been kind of difficult enough to come by. So, as much as Refresher Orb is, is game winning, I feel like you'd also get a lot of mileage out of, out of a pipe or, you know, heck, even a four staff for his team this game. But we'll see how it ends up working out. They're, he can't really be bursted down by the dire unless they land ice blast right on top of him and and bounce him around with a with a flame break and a telekinesis. So he's at least okay on that front. But we'll see how the rest of his team does in these fights. With 400. Greedily grabbing a little bit of farm bottom lane. Looks like he is going to end up being punished. Silence. He needs to steal Shikuchi if he can, but no. Ancient Seal maxed out way too long. Meanwhile, jump in top lane again. Looking for the Ember Spirit, but he's actually made his way back over to mid where XZ has found himself deep behind enemy lines. Gets his Yule Scepter delivered. Gets some extra health off of the borrowed time, but there is no backup inside. And looks like it's just going to be an easy pickup for Mortal Knight Needle. A couple more auto attacks from the Tide. Push him that little bit closer. To what is actually a very fast refresher orb. That's the perseverance already coming out. I mean, he hasn't. He's actually died quite a few times, but well, there's even an ancient stack ready. So, refresher orb complete. Pretty much 25 minutes into the game after that's cleared up. Ancient apparition still finding some more levels, ticking things up bit by bit as they come prodding their way towards this tier one tower on top lane. They do have to always be. Cognizant of the fact that the Tidehunter has Ravage available, so they need to be a little bit careful about what they do here. XTT, looks like they spotted out the Invis Ember and everyone is just gonna, gonna get the heck out of here. Uh, James puts down a Sentry Ward, but yeah, that, that Observer was just about to fade anyway, so it doesn't get too much value out there. Lincoln's is completed for the Weaver, so let the farming begin. He's actually got a double damage, so we'll look towards XED one more time. Four staff down onto the low ground. Maintains a much more composed face this time around, uh, escaping from the Weaver gank. And... Lie, what can they do? The Yule Scepter on this Abaddon is really nice for a sustain, and also very good for popping the Lincolns on the Weaver, so... I like it quite a bit. We've got the first Battle Fury up for the Ember Spirit Broadsword picked up, so... Could be seeing two Battle Furies, or just the beginnings of a crit for him. And actually some boots of travel for this Batrider. He's looking looking pretty spiffy. Making his way around the map. Uh, I don't know about it. I don't know how much I like the boots of travel this game. I in fairness, they're probably not winning a 5 on 5 anyway, especially now that Tide has refresher up and they've probably seen they they saw at the very least the Oblivion staff and they knew that Tide was doing pretty well this game because the laning phase that he had and uh, the fact that the ancients were completely unblocked, so they may suspect that the Refresher Orb is up, but if they're going to be fighting into this Tidehunter, I think a BKB is is a must on the bat. If they can manage to find more pickoffs, then I think the Boots of Travel are just fine. But, oh, like, I mean, they're going straight into the Roshan Pit. They've got a new Desolator picked up, but Tidehunter's going to jump straight in with the Ravage. He doesn't catch the Lifestealer, but there's a double Ravage coming out. XZ and XTT almost bursted down immediately. Two from Lai already dead. A third will follow XZ, unable to make his escape. Tries for the optimistic TP out, but he won't be able to get it. Rubik wondering what the hell just happened, waiting up on the high ground. And Immortal Mag, you know, way too easy for them. Huge experience in Gold Swing. Flowing in 5.7k experience, 2.4k gold, and an easy Roshan coming up. That was about as bad as that could have gone for a lot. If we look at the net worth, it went from 0 to 4k in a matter of seconds, and 5k to 5k in that same amount of time. What an absolute unmitigated disaster for live gaming. 5400? The lone survivor does manage to sneak away and squeak in some extra farm time as he works towards his blink dagger, cursing as always. The cost increase makes life a little bit more difficult for him, but looks like he's still going to get there eventually. Meanwhile, James is going to head over and start working towards his Aghanim Scepter. Four staff up for the Skyrath Mage. Items just flowing in left, right, and center for Immortal Magneto, and well, even the crystal is completed now. For the ember he's he's over the hump in terms of being able to pick up his farm and, and his impact falling off a little bit so things honestly looking very good for img we still haven't even seen a damage item just yet on the weaver but 
2,500 gold is gonna make easy progress towards that. And honestly, I think even Desolator is just a... Desolator is a pretty good choice in this game. Lifestealer, relatively low armor, despite going for the armlet, so you can help pick him apart. The supports, definitely easy fodder. Not really too much of a reason to get an MKB unless you're unless you're worried about TPs. Uh, but mm, yeah, you, you can probably get away with with just going Deso. You should normally have somebody else around, and if somebody's trying to TP out, you can probably burst them anyway. My Sim's still playing the split push game very aggressively, but he's got his team backing him up. Lai kind of realizing that team fighting is not on the cards as they split up and try and grab some more farm on the map. That is going to give Tide the time to grab his ultimate back off cooldown. And, well. Yeah, Lai just have to, have to be content with attempting a little bit of split push right now. XCD going to come in back behind the tower to try and secure this one, but the tier 2 is already down on. Down on top lane, and Tide comes in, looking for the free kill on the bat. I don't think they're going to have to invest a Ravage for this one. Flame Break does open up a little bit of space, but XCT is very low off of the armlet. XZ charges straight in with the Yule Scepter, but I don't know how much he's going to be able to do. XCT needs to fight through. Great Ice Blast connects. They will bring down the Tide. No second Ravage coming out this fight. Ysim now fighting as hard as he possibly can. Time lapse is back, gains a little bit of extra health. But it does turn around and end up being a triple kill for XTT. Just latching on in that fight and Ember Spirit being brought down really easily. Maybe overcommitting a little bit there. I mean, one sided fist, one searing chains. That entire fight. Yes, Batrider is dead, so he can't lock you down, but there's still plenty of ways for the. Still plenty of ways for Lai to burst him. And I think the Yule Scepter was also used and dispelled his. his flame shield. His. Yeah. This build is flame shield, so that definitely hurt his survivability. Ooh, Yihawe attempting the four staff into the silence combo, but 5400 gets the Shikuchi off and he's gonna be fine. Misclick on the creep, in fact. So XTT after that actually picks up some really nice farm. Could see the beginnings of a Basher, Abyssal Blade on him. We do have that Desolator complete on the Weaver. Vlad's on the Abaddon. XZ just still kind of putting together whatever he can so that the team can keep on rolling forward. They were really hoping to get that Roche with the with a Desolator, but unfortunately just too many heroes off the map for too long and Immortal Magnino realized what was up. And XZ. Looks like he should be okay on mid, but why I'm just going to remind him who's boss. We've got the rest of the Immortal Magneto lineup actually just behind. They don't want to dive too deep under the tier 2, though they can see multiple heroes topside. So they may begin pressuring in just that little bit more. 5400 are maybe making his way around to the side. He's got the Shikuchi, he's got the Blink Dagger. If he can steal a Ravage here, that could be absolutely huge. The Rusher Orb's already been used to get that second, to get that second Ravage back up. 11, looking for a jump if he can find it. Tower gets plinked away out a little by the Weaver. Bottom lane is still pushing in for the Dire. And it is going to get Immortal Magneto to pause and go back and handle these lanes. So, a little bit more of an opportunity for Lai. Looks like they are going to end up walking past this Observer Ward, however. So, gank unlikely to be successful. Bit of a shame for IMG that they stored the Ravage cooldown. And weren't really able to go and make any use of it, so... Two minutes until they have a double Ravage, hits 400, Jakuchi lifts! Do they have enough burst damage to bring him down? Yes they do! Not even a question, he will end up trading his life away in return, as the Skyrath Mage just pops him, but... Eh, I think still a worthwhile trade. They come up 900 experience, the better, and a little bit of gold in their favor as well, but... Ember, after that death, realizing the burst potential, is just going to go straight for a BKB, so... Looks like he should be... Should be a little bit better. Well, actually, you know, he may not... He might not even be safe in future. There's still an instant... Blink lift is still instant. And that, that is the one redeeming factor of, of Rubik, that once you have a Blink Dagger, you have instant, no questions asked, uh, disable, which is... Far and away, one of the most powerful things in the entire game. It looks like Lifestealer not going to be going for that Abyssal Blade or Basher, just heading straight towards AC right now. 
And Ogre is still making okay progress towards that Ags. What's Bat got? I still think he desperately needs a BKB. He didn't buy the gem that was actually purchased up by Super, so that's going to delay his Aghanim Scepter a little bit longer. Still about another 2k gold to go on that one. The Weaver's starting to get really big, another 2.2k gold up for him. Uh, and as much as the Lifestealer's damage output is now massive, if if he doesn't get right on top of a target, courtesy of the Batrider in these fights, then I think he's going to get kited pretty effectively. Verdi got the 1-4 staff up in the Skywrath Mage, the Ember Spirit is always elusive, as is the Weaver, and, well, Tide's probably going to be in fog or in the trees to start the fights off, so it shouldn't really be initiated on, for the most part. It's got both teams kind of chilling out and farming for now. Roshan not on the cards for at least another minute, so looks like that's probably going to be go time for Lai. They do have their Vlad's AC up now, so pushing strength continues to mount for them. 5400 just working on a 4 staff, more mobility on Rubik, pretty much always the build, no big surprises there. And what has Tidehunter gone back for? Okay, so Pipe is actually 100% complete and ready to go for his team, and I guess the only thing that they're really waiting on is this Ember Spirit BKB though, that's still going to take him a couple of minutes to secure. I wonder if Abaddon considers going for Aghanim Scepter this game. I guess his team in general isn't really grouped up enough to, to justify it. He's got a TP, the rest of IMG is up here chasing him down. TP's gonna go along with the ultimate and away he will escape. Titan deciding that it's not worth investing a Ravage just to find that kill. Meanwhile, XCD once again lo loaded up with Lifestealer Bombs. Making his way out with the smoke, needs to find something in the duration of this Firefly. They know that the Weaver is up on the top side, but... Can be a little bit difficult to get the Force Death into Lasso, uh, to pop the Lincolns, so... Not gonna go for it. Also, of course, Firefly uh, was already wearing out. And Roshan actually a pretty short respawn, coming up on about a minute until we'll see his return. Immortal Magneto kind of pushing top lane, but I think they'd still really like to take out one of these tier 2s before they do too much else, and... Got some circles being scribbled out by the Skywrath Mage. We got lots of drawing actually going on from both teams. Looks like Lai have a pretty solid handle on what Immortal Magneto are up to. Immortal Magneto also have a sense that the Batrider is still out hunting for ganks, but... I think this is definitely the worst lane for IMG to be in, unless they are for some reason willing to force high ground, but I, I have my doubts about that. And now they have to deal with mid lane and, and bot as well. Bot's probably the best to push because they don't have a tier 2 down here, so if they can take out the tier 1 and the tier 2, then they can start to exert a little bit more control and pressure it out past the river so they can spend a longer time not having to worry about the lane. But. Looks like for now, XCT is going to successfully keep pushing this out, and Lai Gaming will continue to exploit the Radiant Jungle at the same time. Weaver, meanwhile, 3.8k gold up for him, so... I don't know what he's actually going to end up Radiant's going for next. Okay, looks like just, just straight BKB coming up. And we will have another pause, as it looks like I might have some more lag issues over on the Lai Gaming side. Taking a look at our overall graphs, it's still very close. Less than 5k, the net worth lead, probably about, I would say, 4k in Immortal Magneto's favor, and about 2,500 experience as well as we climb up the mountain and head down into the valley. Well, looks like we're back up and ready to have another attempt here. Is mine. Bat finally starting to make some progress towards that BKB. I don't know if he has the Ogre Club. Okay, so he does have the Ogre Club complete, so he just needs to just needs to grab that recipe as mass BKBs start appearing on both sides of the map right now. Uh, also, still waiting on that BKB for the Ember, but progress has actually stalled quite a bit. He was just sitting behind the Weaver on top lane for the last couple of minutes, so it didn't really get all that much gold out. And that did make life a little bit more difficult. Everyone on Immortal Magneto just sitting behind their Weaver right now. Another 5400 is down here. Are they going to jump in? Can he get the silence? He's got Chikuchi, but silence comes out. 
And down he'll go. One more swipe of the anchor for Tidehunter. Seals the deal. 5400, he's made some really big plays and found some really great pickoffs this game, but for every one of those, it seems like he's being picked off in return. Lai trying to sneak Roshan in the meantime, but the jig is up as Immortal might need to surge into the space. And they've got a Desolator and they've got Gush. They clean this up just as quickly. Looks like XZ would like to try and contest if they possibly can. He's going to shield himself up and charge straight in. Ice Blast sailing in over the top. I think it is going to connect on at least the Weaver. He's still got BKB up, gets nuked down a little bit. We need to secure this Roshan Aegis in hand for the Ember Spirit. Multicast along with the Silence comes out an XCT. He gets blown up, gets nothing off XZ. Just has to wait around through the borrowed time right now. Up on the high ground, it's the Batrider. Looked for the Firefly into the lasso, but couldn't find it. XZ on the retreat at TP scroll, cooling down, but no borrowed time. And no chance for escape. Killing spree picked up for the Weaver. And once again, Roshan ends up being Lie Gaming's undoing. These Roshan decisions have just not been good at all. They had a little bit of vision. I think they had a ward up over on this cliff, but that was about it. And... They get completely wiped. Great silence from the Skyrath Mage preventing the life stealer from getting anything done that fight. So that's gonna expand the lead a little bit more for IMG. We've got the Aegis on the Ember Spirit, not to mention the BKB coming out in just a second. And looks like Mortal Might Vita will finally be able to come down here and knock down this tower. 5400 gets stunned up. Looks like he's gonna be able to Shikuchi away, but the Ravage is invested. No mercy from Eleven, he wanted that kill, and he wanted it right then and there. Dominating streak for the Weaver and the tower picked up. Gold just flowing into his pockets. Already another 3k on top of everything, and could even see a Daedalus or something like that. Added to the pile before too long. Lifestealer has finally respawned back up. They've got the Batrider BKB off cooldown in just a second, along with the Infest. So, gonna see if they can go out and find themselves a pick. Looks like we've got a gem picked up for the Skyrath Mage. There's also a gem over on the Batrider. Uh, so both teams making life a little bit difficult in terms of map control, but Immortal Magneto still just pushing further and further ahead, uh, little by little. And the light gaming pickoffs have really started to dry up in recent times. IMG are going to have to wait a bit for this double ravage to come back off cooldown, but using the single ravage definitely seems worth it, but given that they were going to wait for the refresher orb uh, to probably cool down anyway, so it's only another 20 seconds or so added on. Uh, they should still be able to get value out of the Aegis, a pretty healthy 2 minutes and 45 seconds to go on that, so Lie just have to do their best to split push things out and hopefully find a pick off before Immortal Magneto come knocking. Probably just gonna, I would guess, go for the tier 2 on mid lane and open up the opportunity to get two lanes of racks. If they do manage to find a good team fight. It just seems a little bit wasteful to push top and, and only give yourself the opportunity to grab one lane. Meanwhile, XZ is making full use of the Radiant Jungle and split pushing, but Immortal Magneto, they're looking for these pickoffs. Blink away from XCD. Realizing that there is a ward up on that cliff, but they can't really do too much about it. And it looks like Immortal Magneto are going to say, screw it! We've got those Ravages back up in just a couple of seconds. Looks like top lane is the go. Ember Spirit, as always, great at dealing with Split Push. Going to make his way down to bot. Leaves a remnant with the team. Cleans things out. Uh, looks like, yeah, IMG will actually swing over to mid. So a little bit of a run over for the Ember, but that's just going to be time for this Ravage. Take its final few seconds to cool down. XCD jumps in. They're looking for the burst onto Ysim. Great combo coming out. They've got the Weaver dead already, but there's a buyback into a time lapse. Now Lai have to try and scatter. We've got the Ember Spirit charging on in, looking for the kill on Super here. Does manage to grab it. XZ now isolated the borrowed time. Already used multicast going out. Chopped down by the Weaver. XCT pops out to say hello and gets multicasted right into the Mystic Flare. That's going to be a kill. Double kill there. For the Ember, a little bit more token harassment thrown out from XDD, but Mortal Magneto have high ground on the mind. XZ did actually throw out a buyback, ready to try and hold on here and defend. A little bit of Firefly going out from XDD, just to try and make that a little bit more difficult, but James is going to come in, lobs one stun, shield, keeping XDD up through all of this. As Mortal Magneto continue their siege, XZ charges straight in and just dies! 
Goodbye. I don't know what happened there. I guess borrowed time was not ready. Somehow. And there you go. Okay. I, I actually don't know what happened there. I think he, I guess he just got bursted from above 400 to below 400 in one shot, and as a result, Horrid Time didn't activate. I, I think that's how it works, I'll be honest and say that I don't play a whole bunch of a bad. Whiffed Ravage on middle lane! Once again, Eleven thinking that he can out-reaction time the Lifestealer here, but XTT doesn't have too many buttons to be hovering, so... Uh, makes the rage a very easy choice. We did also have a Lifestealer buyback uh, in the midst of all of that there, but... Lai will still end up losing their melee barracks. So, Immortal Magneto slowly but surely progressing themselves here. The Daedalus is up on the Ember Spirit. That buyback from the Weaver not even slowing his progress too much, as he does already have another 4k gold up in the bank. And what is the item choice going to be for him? Well... Just some magic sticks on the courier for now, so not too many clues given away. Lai well, actually, well, I guess realizing that Double Ravage is down and that they have to try and make something happen are going to come charging straight down the middle lane, but Ysim already in position to push out top. We've got a Blink Dagger on the Skyrath Mage, so hopefully they can drop Blink Ancient Seals and finally set up for these Blink Ravages on the Lifestealer. XTT is still chomping away. We'll grab the tier 2, super. He's got that Aghanim Scepter complete and almost level 16 on the Ancient Apparitions, so we could see some game-changing some game -changing Ice Blast out of him if the game continues to progress. But Weaver, having done his job, pushing things into the top lane, and even grabbing the Tier 3 Tower, he's going to TP back home very happy with, uh, with the progress that he made there. I don't know quite what he's going to put in here. He's already got two defensive items, so I think something like Heart is probably a little bit of a waste. Uh, though he has been getting blown up by... Okay, while he has been getting blown up by the Batrider, I don't think Heart changes that, to be honest. And you're playing against Ancient Apparition as well, so... There's not very many chances that you're going to get a lot of... A lot of regen off the Heart in fights, so... I think damage is probably the answer. He could even go for Mjolnir if he really wants to. It's pretty good to throw in the Tidehunter while he's... He's diving into the midst of everything, but... To me, crit seems like the, the natural choice. Rapier if he's feeling super ballsy, but I don't think they've got that game quite that in the bag. Despite what the graphs may say. 20k net worth, 20k experience. Definitely a crushing lead, but... Well, I could pull off some sort of turnaround. They've already got the tier 2 bot, they've already got the tier 2 mid, so... A fight going disastrously the other way with Ravages being on cooldown could actually mean one or two lanes of racks for Lai at this point. As much as they don't have a lineup, that's designed to push down towers, they've got a Deso AC on this life store. So if he survives, then he's in pretty good shape. Actually, a much more ratty item than I was expecting, as Ysim ends up going for a Manta style. I, I guess this makes it a little bit more difficult to jump in lasso him, but... I don't know. It's an, it's an okay sieging item at the end of the day. XCD is still hunting for these pickoffs, still hanging on to his gem, Immortal Magneto. All rallied behind the Weaver at the moment on the middle lane, Tidehunter. Newly acquired Force Staff at the ready. Radiance top tower just going to be lurking attack. over in the trees. Lifestealer calling the retreat, pulls his troops back to the tower. As they continue to just plink away, XZ, no fear with the borrowed time, is going to lead the way. XTT also up here, the Ravage comes in this time around, they catch him. The Silence into the Mystic Flow, the double Ravage expended. XZ also caught on the edge of that one, pops off the board time. What can he grab here? The Ravage is actually stolen by the Rubik, but it doesn't catch on to anyone as the Tidehunter pushes in aggressively. Super is going to try and TP out 5400. No such luck for him. It's three kills for Immortal Magneto out of nowhere. Finally managing to catch the Lifestealer napping and will manage to grab those kills. Ping's immediately going out. As it looks like they're going to try and grab themselves another lane of Rex. Top lane already exposed, so... If they just shove straight in through middle lane, they can go up there and grab that lane as well. They know that the Lifestealer bought back in the previous fight, so he's guaranteed dead for 60 seconds. And looks like Immortal Magneto are going to be going straight up towards that top lane. Still arranged racks around here, but 
Ysim has bigger fish to fry, going straight onto the melee. Ember also making his way up here. Another demon edge in the inventory. Why not? And Ping is going up bottom lane, realizing that they've still got 30 seconds to use, 20 seconds on the Abaddon. And plenty of damage being pumped up by the Desolator. XCD gonna jump in here and do his best to buy some time. He's dragging the Ogre all the way back towards the Fountain, but doesn't get quite there. And that's actually gonna be your GG call. Light Gaming have had enough, and Immortal Magneto will better their record from what I believe was 1 and 4? Yeah, 1 and 4 to 2 and 4. And that's actually gonna bump Y down to 2 and 4 as well, so. That could actually be the end of uh, of Lai's playoff hopes right there. I guess there's a potential, there might be a potential multi-way tie uh, for three and four, but five losses is, is definitely too many to advance, especially with Vici and C-Deck already locked in as five and one and, and four and three. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't go too far. We've got another best of one for Star Series 11 China group stage is coming up next, which is going to be LGD versus IG, another very important match. Pretty much a must win for IG uh, if they're going to be making it through. So thank you for watching. It's been great having you along for the ride so far here on, I was about to say Beyond the Summit, but we're on Dota Star Ladder uh, underscore EN. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you before too long for our final best of one of the evening.